Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2. I'm excited to introduce the player in the blue. In the bottom right of Dragon Scales, the fastest player in StarCraft 2. It's the Italian Stallion. It's Raynor. But quite a worthy opponent on the other side. Not so much known for speed as his methodical mechanical practice and his ability to take on everyone despite being constantly underestimated. Well, much of the time by me, but in general. It's the people's terror. It's Cure. If there's someone you Terran players out there want to copy, I know it's Maru, I know it's Beyond, but Cure is the one holding it down. Currently the third ranked Terran in the world. Raynor the third rank Zerg. Um, Cure behind Beyond and Maru. And Raynor behind uh, Dark and Sarah. So, Still on the podium, but I think these two evenly matched in this Kung Fu Cup Finals. I want to thank World Team League, by the way, for not only putting on this a $1,500 weekly tournament, getting, obviously, the best players to show up, but also the Team League. Uh, if you have any matches you want to see from that awesome from WTL to send me these games, I really appreciate it, and I hope you do as well, because if you like these games, Jimmy, what are we, what are we at? 1,000, if we get 1,081 likes, I'll cast another series. And, you know, maybe we'll make it from the Kung Fu Cup, World Team League. Either way, you have any recommendations, uh, make sure to leave them in the comments. Uh, I do read them, um, for better or worse, much of the time. And though we might not see it tomorrow or the next day, uh, I look forward to those matches out there as well. So thank you for tuning in. Hopefully... You've had a good day so far, and hopefully it's about to get a little bit better. And hopefully you're not feeling quite like this overlord that Cure has hunted down and now is uh, popping like an overripe balloon. Balloons don't ripen like a tomato. Maybe I've been playing too much Deep Rock. And also, really? Really, that's a... What a day! Wow. Well, that is, uh, uh, not, not the favorite thing to happen as a Terran player. He doesn't lose the Marines. It is not a decisive moment. It's not going to dictate the pace of the game or, or really the build orders in any meaningful way. But, uh, so annoying. Well, first Hellion, first two Hellions and a Reaper Hellion. It looks like... Game one, we're starting out with the most, almost the most cookie cutter, standard, uh, sort of builds. He just runs by, um, sir, this is private property. Well, he does spot the roaches, which I guess was important to get that information. But, for, for killing, well, he's given up any opportunity to use those Hellions later on. Um, the best way to scout your opponent is to attack them, as much of the time they're forced to pull many of their units to respond, but was it worth two Hellions and a Reaper? Maybe to cure it was, and he's got a Banshee on the way. A Cloak as well. Second Banshee already in production. So, Banshee more than enough to deal with a handful of roaches here. I'm not sure if Rainer was uh, interested in doing an all-out attack, but either way, with Cure committing the Hellions and Reaper by, it's been spotted, and now Rainer already out on the lair. Three spore crawlers. No interest in ending the game on Hatch Tech here. At least not anymore. Here, very, like I, like I mentioned, methodical. Macro-oriented. He's not afraid to play the game for uh, the better part of an hour. If he thinks that's the way um, he's most likely to win. Or, alternatively, his opponent has failed to kill him. Which uh, is not... A rare scenario either. So. <laughs> Aliens poking around at the edge of the creep. Rainer already poking it halfway across the map with the creep tumors. Spreading metastasizing as Cure kind of gave up any opportunity to put any pressure on. But he does have a third command center. He's got 52 SCVs, the triple threat, the stim. Wait, where's the combat shield? Well, he's getting plus one, plus one, and stim incredibly macro-oriented here. 
as neither player and, th and that just means the clashes are going to be that much more dramatic because the first fights we're going to have are going to be with full three to four base economy rainer is going up towards 80 drones now he's already got an infestation pit on the way which that could be for one of the quickest hives i have ever seen uh infestors maybe swarm hosts are gonna be a strong probably not i might even go so far as to say no um as up against marine tank or even against uh, unless you know for sure it is mech but he doesn't know that two cloak banshees and a bunch of hellions might be uh might might trend towards mech but terrans have swerved way harder into bio from there two infestors and then some roaches. Doesn't have much gas for much else right now. As just adding on more extractors. Still, passive game to start things off. There is a lot on the line. Uh, a lot more than your average weekly tournament here. The, the ESL cups have a few hundred bucks, but um, I believe first place taking home six or seven hundred uh, for the uh, Kung Fu Cup. So I expect to see what these players have. I know there's the Gamers 8 tournament coming up uh, in a month or two, but there's not much else besides outright win. Not that I think especially Cure is going to be hiding his builds, but... Well, here we are. Keeping tabs on the creep. It's going to be Roach Hydra. And now a Hive. Eight-minute Hive from Rainer. Vipers, likely. Lurkers. Almost guaranteed, I think, with the Hydra down at that timing. It's just going to depend on, on how Kira wants to deal with them. Still, poking and prodding at the edge of the creep. Roaches, all the inf- Oh, no! <laughs> it absolutely disastrous, Fungal! <laughs> what? Go tell your friends what happened here. I- Oh, no! The first major fight of the game is not so much a fight as a massacre. As Raynor just holds down almost 16 Marines. Well, 16 total now. And watches them melt away with some help from the Roaches. Though I think two Fungals would have done it anyways, except for maybe the couple that get heal bombed. <laughs> That's not going to stop Kira. It never has before. As he has a tendency to lose a whole lot of units, but he has a tendency to build even more. And I, I imagine the reason he didn't even notice the infestors were running up on him is he was so focused on building up back at home. So, 2-2 two, two on the way. Still, besides that one, an infestor died. Did he lose that in the first fight? That is a bit unfortunate. Infestors, Dark makes it look easy. Infestor, Cyril makes it look uh, overpowered. But everyone else starts to realize infestors are not nearly that easy to keep alive. What, these marines kind of out there on their own. Corrosive bile thrown up. One banshee badly bruised. Queen gets a tap on the shoulder from the ravagers and hydras like, get back to the creep. Rainer now, lurkers on the way. Lurker range, seismic spines. Two thirds of the way done. And he's nearly maxed out at about the 10 minute mark here. Is there a Baneling Nest? There is not a whole bunch of Zerglings added in, but overall, Kier has, he's got a very conventional army. He's got eight siege tanks. He's still got those Banshees. Only a couple dozen Marines because they keep getting shaved, shaved off by the Roaches. But, all right, now, now fight, now fight guys. I know, I've been filling so much time to start because I know this is going to be a great series. I can feel it. And I looked at the file sizes. Okay, so that also gave some of it away. I don't know how it goes, but I know it's dramatic. That's uh, literally based on the amount of data contained in the replay phone. Or they just sit there for 15 minutes, fight and die in each game. I don't know. It's possible. Mm, down goes a Banshee. Still the second one. Here, I, I think he's a little surprised to still have these banshees left. There's already ghosts on the way. Where, where are the hydra? There's one hydra. Banshee. The saga continues. So the hydra eventually gets the banshee. 
And Kira's perfectly content to play uh, City Skylines over here. Oh, he dodges a fungal. He has four more command centers heading towards double digits at record pace. Meanwhile, Hive Tech and the Baneling now speed everything, kicking in for Rainer. This is, especially this is a smaller map. We rarely see this map go particularly long. But the tension, that they're so close together now. Something's gotta give. Here is not maxed out, so is a bit reluctant to fight. I'm kind of surprised. Well, Ra Raider has 6,500 minerals in the bank. Uh... Well, five command centers at a time, four ghosts, a partridge, and a nidus tree. We got, Raynor's literally, I think he's just going through like, click, click, uh, he's got essentially everything. Uh, he's trying to expand where Cure has currently taken his command center, so just making sure. Cure hasn't... <clears throat> I'm not going to say he's been aggressive in his expansion, but he certainly hasn't sat idly by, as he now has five bases. There's not so many maps, or, or so many uh, uh, bases on this map to contest for Rainer. There is the center bases. I think he's just getting rid of the roaches now. And then the corners. Those are the two contested ones. If Cure can either deny or hold on to either of those. Now, usually, the Terran army is more cost-effective, but Raynor opens things up at 12.45. You exit tank into the fray. Blinding Cloud disables some of the rest, but the Ghost will not be busted here today. He got the planetary, but the Ghost snipe him in the posterior on the way out. So... Are we using a different resource loss thing? No, it's just not. I think the font is weird. Anyways, so we look at the numbers. The numbers, what do they mean? Do they spell disaster for... Overall, 1,300 gas... Um, killed by Kier. Yes, the left side is how much he's destroyed. Nuclear missile is on the way. Three more factories. How many production facilities is he sitting on? Eight racks. He's going to have five factories... High sack auto tracking and neo steel armor. No hesitation. Queued up right after 3 3. And the command centers number 10 and 11 are in production. So Cure is looking to lock it down. Whereas Rainer, he has money in the bank, not so much gas. He's looking to smash. Oh my god. I mean, he wanted to get rid of the roaches, I'm sure. Maybe not in so lopsided a battle. Once again, calling it a battle is, uh, maybe a bit strong. The sensor towers are covering Cure's entire quadrant of the map. There are 50 Bane links. Nuclear launched! How are you in the- how did you get in here? Did he walk in? Uh, let's go to the Rainer camp. No, well, the red dot's there. That's a lot of overlords. That's actually well worth nuking. Cure! Kills! Uh, there have now been 16 over. How many Overlord? 13 Overlord Nuke! Um... Wow, Raider's actually... He's building 14 Overlord. Wow, that... that that's a pretty decent nuke. Interesting. Well, Cure strikes back. Abduct. Mainlings rolling by, trying to absorb as many hits as possible. Blinding Cloud. Once again, Rainer dismantles this base. Finally, Cure's had enough. Nuclear launch detected. Rainer trying to keep it up. Ghost caught and killed, so the nuke will not land. More Mainlings rolling through, but the siege line, for the most part, as well as the ghosts, are good enough. 31 SCVs killed as Cure will switch to mech. The trickle-down mechanomics of this many command centers, as well as losing those SCVs. I was about to say, it's probably a good thing he lost the SCVs, all right? He doesn't need that many SCVs. Well, he's rebuilding seven at a time, so... 
Uh, I think he, he thinks otherwise. There is burrow, but no neural parasite right now for Rainer. Of all the things not to press, of all the tech buttons not, not to uh, fill in. Very surprised. Oh my god, the mules. The mules from here. Let's see it. To the moon! Let's, let's see. Update. It, I guess it's not that much more. It's only one base. You can only mule mine with one mule per patch, which I'm pretty sure that Cure understands. How many mules on the field right now? He's got eight. Perfect efficiency. Mules will uh, interrupt each other mining. They'll have to wait for another mule to finish. This rarely becomes relevant, but Cure has made it relevant earlier than pretty much I've ever seen. Another set of blinding clouds. Siege tanks. The ramps are asphyxiating here. The choke point's overwhelming. The planetary finally falls. And Rainer. He wins another fight, but it cost him again more. Well, I mean, it's nowhere near unsustainable at this point. He's got 3,800 gas in the bank. He did discover Neural Parasite in his unused upgrades tab. He actually does not have plus three melee. Which for main link, just consider the amount of it does. It gives, I believe, five extra damage to main links because weapon upgrades do scale with the damage of a unit, which is why they're so important, even more than armor most of the time for especially like uh, Terran and Protoss. Kira unleashes a volley of scans. Right now, with nine orbitals, I'm pretty sure you can keep that up almost. Uh, all uh, He could have at least one, if not two scans out, and still have some energy for mules. 92 drones for Rainer as he's trying to strip the map of resources as quickly as possible. So far, here, he just keeps rebuilding. He says if it costs you more than 400, or I guess 550, 150, in order to take out this base, it's worth it. And did it? Oh yeah, it certainly did. So even if the planetaries keep dying, Pure can keep this up. Rainer right now does have the center base, but he doesn't have any of the contested ones. He isn't, he isn't, he keeps working on this left side. This is becoming a bit of a chess game here. And yeah, I think the observers zooming out this much is appropriate as these armies are massive. Kind of unannounced. Cure has almost completely stripped out the bio aside from the ghosts. Here comes Rainer. Thor is in the middle of the field, blasting through some of the vipers. Close on the backline, but Cure, a classic Cure mistake. Oh no, all the girls were in the same spot at the same time and they get bungled all together. Uh, oh, oh. Well, um, that was a disaster. That was a huge deal there for Raider. Not only because he killed the ghosts and the resource cost, but the next wave is going to be very hard to hold. That is progress made for for Rainer there. Getting rid of that many ghosts will unlock well he, he immediately refills how many siege tanks? There are fifteen siege tanks. Eleven hell bats. And count he's going blue flame plus three hell chads. Alright? Why is this important? Plus three hell bats? One shot Zergs. They just spontaneously combust when they come within range of a hell bat. That's how it is. Okay, the Zerglings are essentially eliminated. Now, since Mainlings are not actually light units, it doesn't improve uh, against them, but... Well, here comes another wave. Abducts a single Liberator. Rainer, some of the Zerglings make it through. Nidus Worms all over the map. As Rainer overwhelming the center line. But Cure is uh, consolidating his defenses. Down goes the Orbital. I keep bringing up the battle report to see, but that one was pretty efficient. Ooh, and then he lost two lurkers, and it became a lot less so. The Nidus Worm is filled with lurkers. The Overseer sprints in towards the main. Of course he has Overlord speed. He has all the speeds, besides Ultralis, I guess. 
but uh, <laughs> I don't know what I expected, but he drops whatever he had nearby. A Hellbat and a Siege Tank, the unlikely buddy cop combo. And the Mech Army of Cure. The Flex Terran here. Well, he keeps holding, but Raynor is making real progress. Like I said, the contested bases are the most important ones. Though I expect it to be the center and the corner. Raynor has already taken the corner, and he's clearing the center. He's also working on the left. So, Cure's income is plummeting. Raynor at over 2,500 more. And when you go mules, you start mining out quickly. He has almost no more minerals at the bases he can defend. It, uh, Cure's going to have to pick one of these bases. The Zerglings all over the place, drawing friendly fire in. And the siege tanks doing as much to themselves as the Zerglings are doing from the outside. More lurkers. Nidus to reposition around. Raynor in one of the most patient displays I've ever seen from him. Raynor is a player who very much wants to attack. He's always been like that, a younger, what is this, a, a, a relatively slow game at 515 APM from him. Here, hanging out at 300. Um, but taking it somewhat slow and methodical, and he's dismantling Kier. He's showing that you can't just sit back and give up the map, even if you're defending efficiently, even if you're building the right units in the right unit composition, there are ways of breaking it down. And Raynor is doing it. He, he's had a few clutch fungals, a few, a few very key moments where he used those infestors. Otherwise, he's just kind of sprinkled in the vipers and uh, relied on zerglings and banelings with maybe a few hydras and lurkers behind. 33 more Banelings on the way. A Nidus on the front line. Kier has to defend that left-hand base. He can no longer afford, puns somewhat intended, to stop mining. He's dropping the mules on it. Now we gotta remember, Raynor will be mining out. Well, actually, mules are, are weird. Raynor might not actually be mining out earlier. I'm not... He's starting to run out of mineral patches. He's down to 82 drones. This has been a pretty textbook game from him, to be honest. Lurkers scampering in. There's not that much left to hit over here, but he's putting some pressure on. He does have that high ground base. He is mining the minerals and gas. Minerals and gas, which Cure would very much like to have. Here has managed to max out though with 143 army supply and the ghosts! Oh no, the spore isn't burrowed because it tried to burrow where a lurker was! Disastrous! But Raynor strikes back. Blinding cloud washes over the entire army. They can't see anything. Well, once it dissipates though, the Hydras under fire, the Hellbats. Raynor still able to find a lot of damage. The Vipers are 116 Zerglings in the production ta What? How many Banelings, Rainer? Did he actually run out of larva? He would have built more if he could. He has the money. It could have easily been 150. Once again, if he had the larva. But 50 Banelings! 50! And this is neat. I don't even think this is the first time we've seen 50 Banelings on the field, but... Couple Lurkers as well. Rainer comes in for another wave. Will any of these be game ending? One particularly bad fight could set Raynor back quite a bit. I don't know if it would turn the tide, but it would certainly lessen it. So he, he has to be careful, but so far every attack has been pretty decent from Raynor. And another one, will this one be an exception? The, the Banelings are moving back and forth. The reason you do that is to maximize the amount of damage they absorb because the Banelings, when they attack, they're done, all right? So might as well have them be attacked and killed as opposed to just A-clicking and wasting all the HP of the Bane. The literal biomass shield is what Raynor is using there in order to absorb tank shots or, or Hellbats or just any attention from the units before fulfilling their ultimate life purpose to end it. Cure. Committing to the center. 
He's tried to hold the left. He's given up on the corner. Now he's he's throwing everything into the center. He even took down the cooling tower. The destructible rocks dropped down. A burrowed zergling. There's still some resources there. How many more attacks? Rainer now has 62 banelings. This is it. Here comes Rainer. Blinding clouds across. I, I was assuming blinding clouds across the board. The banelings just roll through. As the zerglings clean things up, the banelings see the ghosts and go straight for them. And uh, not enough units here for Kira to defend. He's forced to retreat with two orbitals. A little late on the scan, loses a couple more ghosts. There are drones dying, though. Oh, during this, you're actually pushed up to the top right, but we revealed the supplies at the end of the fight. And it's a disaster for Cure. He's down to eight SCPs. He hasn't been able to step past the halfway mark of the map. Essentially, ever. Unless you count the Hellions driving by, which I wouldn't. Or the Marines getting fungled, which... Well, we saw how that ended. Cure on defense for over half the match. And, uh, well, I think that might end soon. Because Cure might end soon. Raynor being quite careful. Hellbat's still dangerous. He has not overstepped or rolled or slithered at any point, in my opinion. Uh, every once in a while, like, uh, a lot of the times we see Zergs are like, Okay, yeah, well, I can go. I, And then, about 75 dead Zerglings, 30 dead Banelings, and a couple dead Vipers later, after killing three or four Hellbats in a siege tank, they they realize, you know, maybe not. But it seems Rainer's learned that lesson. He's applying it. And right now, he understands that he's already mined much of this. He doesn't actually have that many more minerals left for himself. There are still a few in the center. We've made a very efficient job of mining out. Like, we are we are looking at the last few mineral patches. There's not that many minerals left. How many minerals have been mined? Oh my god, 150,000 in less than 30 minutes. EMPs are good. That means no blinding cloud, but not too much to deal with the lurkers. Well spread, the choke points on the bridge. Cure's last stand. He didn't have the Vipers! Raider didn't have the Vipers with the Investors! Oh no! Oh my god! Not like this! It's... I... Ah! No! Oh no! I led myself on so much! I... I've complimented... How? I was so sure, Rainer, like, I'm rarely that com- I'm like, alright, well, this time, oh my god, he accidentally put some- he gets an EMP. A few fungals get thrown out. I think as soon as your units start going to this- was it over? What a start. I... Let's take a look. Okay, so this is the fight ending. Raynor is building Hydras and Zerglings. He's got... He, he still has 49 drones? Like... Well, the thing is, look at Kira's army. Even if he only has this base of mining, if you just lost... If you have no more spell, oh my god, it happened! Oh, I can't believe I just spent. This is a, uh... oh my. Well, that is certainly one way to open things up, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you, Kira, for demonstrating one particularly bad fight. That's the danger of playing those low spellcaster army compositions. You are spending so much money. You're spending everything to break them. 
And that means if it turns the other way, it doesn't stop turning. Especially if you GG immediately. Well, Jimmy, just... Can we go to the net? Jimmy, please. No! I don't. Here wins game one. I can't believe it. I have so many mixed feelings. The People's Terran, using the People's Strategy. And I know you're lying to me, uh, Terran players. A lot of Terran players think they'll be the double-dropping and multiple-location stutter-stepping players. But they end up with a bunch of siege tanks and planetaries. Now, rarely does that mean a win. Cure clearly prioritizing well. I can't... And Rainer jumped the gun. Obviously, just jumped the gun a little early. That's what jump the gun means. I can't... Now, now they're, they're Zerglings on the map. He's doing a Zerg rush. I don't blame him. <laughs> Ancient Cistern is a huge map. Which usually favors Zerg. But, at this point... I gotta fall back to my previous filler commentary, which is Rainer doesn't love playing the late game. He is a very Ling and Lisk oriented Zerg. Sitting back and building up is not his style. Um, but sometimes it is the best choice. This time around, it's not an all-in. It's just an early pool. The Zerglings chasing down the Reaper. Gotta keep the Reaper! The command center is delayed slightly. He's got a couple marines here to help out. Kills an extra zergling. So, something here. Ooh, the zerglings almost get the reaper. Reaper. Oh, where did the SCV, the SCV ran off? To try to escape the lings, succeeded, and then almost went right back into their claws. Two command centers. Checking the corners here. Kyrie was able to come back. Very important, he kept the command center alive. Didn't have to cancel. Um, probably the best case scenario here. As Rainer delayed it a bit. He's got three hatcheries now, but overall, eh. Not a uh, overwhelming lead for either player. I think that's about... Honestly, I think Cure got the better end of that slightly. Because if you can shut down the, the Zerglings, best case scenario, well, best case scenario is getting kill all the SCVs. But the actual, the realistic best case scenario is canceling the command center. Maybe killing an SCV or two with it. Cure bounces the queen out of the way. Says, don't mind if I do. Picks up the creep tumor. Queen protests. Throws her knitting needles at it. But does not end up killing it. I'm sorry, go, go. I think Rainer testing things. Some technical issues. We don't wait for anyone here, though. No time stops. No, uh, tactical pauses. Um. Moving on. Only acknowledge because it shows up instantaneously in the chat, the whole conversation. Banshee with Cloak and Stim on the way. As well as a relatively quick la- Uh... Is he doing the German taxi bill? Why are you getting Overlord speed? And a quick lair. I imagine that's just for Overlord drop- Maybe for Roach speed? Uh-huh. Well, they're the Dropper Lords. Lambo will be proud. Though, I'm not sure if he'd approve of the timing. 
as there's already going to be cloaked banshees on the way. This does feel a little... I mean, it, it's kind of like the early Zergling push, where if it's not scouted, it could be pretty devastating. But if it is, he already has a couple... Ba oh, wait, did he see it? Oh, he's, he definitely sees it now, right? He's like, oh, wait a sec. Oh, my. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, wait a second. He's got bunkers on the way. He saw the dropper lords. He knows what this is. Oh, my God. Oh, it's a disaster for Raynor. The Hellions are getting getting cures already preparing at home. The Banshees might be a bit distracted, but the Hellions have eyes on the prize. And they're barbecuing the mineral line right now. I don't like... What is the what is the best case scenario for the queen? No! Oh, no, regicide! Down goes an over no! Oh and just like that. Match point for cure. Oh my. Uh, the queen shouldn't have flown. Oh my god. Well, that was an abrupt ending. That was another abrupt ending. At least this one we could see coming. It it did not come together for Rainer. No part of that game. A bit of a questionable um, call on the queen drop. I get it. Like, maybe against someone going Banshee, if you can pin him back in their base. But Kira spotted it. He dealt with it. And just like that, we're on match point. Kung Fu Cup could be over early here. Um as cure just demonstrating he's not taking he, he ain't taking no gun all right he will get attacked he will kill 15 waves of ling bane hydra a thousand zerg he will get his command center killed 10 times if the 11th command center can land in mine all right as long as the efficiency's there it's perfectly fine and the zerg players are gonna have a terrible time if you look very closely at the income line, then you'll see a very troubling sign. That mules every day. Make me want to resign. All right. Like and subscribe. It's not a very good sign, though. <sighs> Oh, I'm getting whiplash. I don't know if one gets whiplash. It's not like a, you're, you're coming down with a cold. Oh, I think I got some of that whiplash. Ricky, you are not using that word correctly. <laughs> Something that happens abruptly. But having one game be no rush 10 minute into constant wave defense into an abrupt ending, and then... A six minute all in just and just like that. I will say these are very decisive endings as well. I don't blame Rainer for the timings, but it is a bit concerning so far. Gresfin though. I have some opportunity for another extended game. We'll see if Rainer wants to go down that route. I think it comes down to Rainer. As Kier so far, he's two zero. Like I said, he's going to do what he thinks works. Doesn't matter if it's not going to make the highlight reels or the micro, the sickest marine splits of all time. 420 MLG, wrist-breakingly good marine sp No. Cure will casually build 20 siege tanks and 20 command centers. All right. If he thinks that's the highest percentage of and uh, we're starting out with one-tenth of that in command centers, but he's got 400 minerals in the bank, and that means command center number three joins the production tab. He defended the last all-in with relative ease. Um, we got Zergling speed on the way. No Roach Warren this time. Overlord on the run, on the float. Um... Not sure who put in a tech ping there, but <laughs> this time doesn't make it to the pervert. Oof. That is rough. He only has 
one more Ovi on the way. Yeah, that's definitely gonna slow things down. It's not a devastating blow, but losing an Overlord at that stage of the game is quite annoying. We've been over this. Annoying. And Cure, the Oncologist, comes in, wipes out tumors, and gets away with it with one HP and zero fucks. Classic Cure. That was the most lackadaisical Reaper Micro as well. He just bounced the queen right to the side, comes in, stutter steps, almost trips on the way out. Like, but he gets out. Banshee again? Yeah, Cure, like, he's a, he's a grinder. And I don't mean that app, though maybe. He's a, he, he strikes me as a player who, who, Practices like 10 hours a day. All right. Um, now, to quote Cure, when he won against Dark and Solar and GSL, was asked, like, even though these players were favored against you, I think he ended up winning this GSL, by the way, and I'm describing, even though these players were favored against you, why do you think they did so poorly? And he said, because Terrans are hardworking and, and Zerg players are lazy. I mean, there were a few little caveats to that, but that was the translation, apparently. Which, I'm like, yeah, that's the people's Terran right there. Like, I don't... That sounds correct. <laughs> it's like, if Dark practiced, he could beat me, and now, well, recently. I, I... Actually, that's not true. Cure beat Dark recently. He's back on the grind. Cure had a little bit of a lull as Beyond resurged, but... Um, I think Cure is back to being more consistent than, well, vengeance! More consistent than Clem overall, with maybe a slightly lower peak, but a higher average, as Clem is a bit of a roller coaster to be a fan of. Uh, you never know. Well, it depends. Is it is it the DreamHack Regional? Then Clem all the way. Is it anything else? Flip a coin. <laughs> Did he put his overlord there intentionally to block that? I mean, it doesn't block the health bar, but on casual glance, I don't think so. But I do like the uh, tech in the safest location. And Aspire. Aspire. Now, this is Rainer now, I said, with quite a bookend sentence. You know what the problem with the Dragon Scales game was? My APM was too low. How can I raise my APM? What forces me to raise my APM? I need to warm up. Mutas. Mutas are one of the most APM intensive units. They always have been, but even more so in Legacy of the Void. In this day and age, when Mutas die to everything and its distant cousin, who also happens to do splash damage to air. Um, then you literally, you pretty much can never look away from them. Maybe if you're flying over, in this case, open water. <laughs> but they are, in my opinion, the most APM intensive unit in the game. And that is, even for players like Raynor and Serral, kind of a defining character. It, it's just too hard to make them work. But it's always fun to see them try. And who knows? Mutas might be the tool that Raynor needs to crack open Cure's defenses. Assuming he can get to them. As right now, there's a siege tank in uh, Siege Tank Canyon. Which is what I have titled this area where everyone does siege tank pushes that can hit multiple bases. Um, the Mutas, have, has, have they been revealed? Does he have turrets? Cure has turrets. I don't know when he built them. But either way, still going to be pressing forward as the best defense against Mutas is a good offense. Just keeping the pressure on. Yeah. Rainer's only at 400 APM right now. Well, average. Expect that number to rise. The Mutaling Bane out on the map. Oh, it finds an army moving out. Cure. <laughs> Nav the tank. Good target fire. Able to retreat home behind the lines. 
where another tank is sieged. More coming forward. The Hellbats to protect the tanks. Olivera inspired. Hellbats will guard against a flank, but they won't guard against Mutalisks. As uh, pretty much the only thing they can't do. Banelane's coming in. He's trying to come around the sides. Looking to target down whatever he can. The Queen's getting involved. Morlings and Banes cure on the back line. The Banshees are headed in. Ooh, we got a game. As the Muta count. Ooh, look at it. I have to stop saying ooh. But that's how I feel. Tone it down. Okay. Um. Rainer Supply dipping. The Muta count growing, though. And there are no Widow Mines on the field. He's going to have double-digit Mutas. 1-1 one, one is pretty far off. Mutas, 100-100 hundred, hundred apiece. Really delay your upgrades. Um, or uh, or they delay Mutas. Either way, Siege Tank Canyon, well-populated by its signature unit right now. As Cure reinforced the one Siege Tank push with two more. And now has three hanging out there. Another wave cut off by the reinforce. Well, re another wave of reinforcements cut off by the Lings and Bane. The hatchery has been taken up, but the main links just wander into the middle of the line, and then the SCVs trapped in a prison of their own design. Beautiful SCV split. Okay, I'm, I'm downgrading that to just pretty good. As, uh, ooh, yeah. Well, in typical Cure fashion, loses 18 SCVs. He loses uh, probably a dozen Marines, and he's even on supply. As, of course, Banelings, um... Only get to attack once, and then that supply is gone. Another wave. Oh, this is giving me flashbacks to Wings of Liberty. Which are going to be... We're going to be jerked back to reality as soon as these Widow Mines connect. As Widow Mines um, added in Heart of the Swarm. Don't. Don't editorialize. Don't edit. It was a mistake. Drawing Claws on the way. As the field is filled with Zerk, but the canyon still has siege attacks. The mutas close in. The medevacs have to abandon the location. A few marines on the high ground. Enough of a stopgap in the gap here to uh, discourage the mutas. He's going to try to target down. Gets one. Finds two, actually. Quite a convenient. There's been an overseer hanging out in the main for quite a bit. So overall... Rainer losing about 1,500 more minerals and 100 more gas. Here um, killed 100 lings over the last couple minutes. Which isn't actually that many. So, not too bad. Rainer being somewhat efficient. The mutas, it seems like he's kind of shifting out of them. He's sitting on 11 mutas, which with plus one air attack, I think think is enough to one-shot medifacts, but don't quote me on that or ever do math, all right? It's dangerous. And he's building a few more mutas, so it's not like there's a method to that madness. He just wanted more circlings and didn't have much gas. Six more mutas. So it is mutalisks. Still quite a muta risk, as Cure is maxed out with 2-2 two -two and plus three started. He's got the anti-mutaling bling army, but he only has one turret in his main base. Which seems like a remarkable oversight. Oh, and a contaminate. Delayed a Thor. So, small, but important moves there from Rain. Widowman's revealed. Or, more likely, uh, at least shown. So... He knows he has to deal with them. The Muta is able to overwhelm the turret at the third. SCV is suffering for it. More Lings and Banes. Rainer right now trying to buy time for plus two, plus two to complete. He had his infestation pit done. Hydralis Den begins. The Hive will begin behind it. Right, Rainer? We're going Hive. We're going Lurkers. Lurkers. One of the better counters to uh, the Mass Widow Mine. Not so bad against Thors and Marines either. The mute is still keeping Cure busy. Cure holding that high ground. He's so patient. I, I said Rainer was so patient in game one, but Cure, I mean, as the defender in that game, by default, a patient one. 
And he's just holding this location in Siege Tank Canyon here, which has now become temporarily Widowmine Valley, one of those seasonal events that nobody likes. Well, the Lings and Banes, most of the Widowmines initially taken out, now trying to draw them into the Medivacs, doing an okay job thus far. The Muta's swinging in, but another Thor and a huge clump of Marines and Marauders are going to be enough to turn the Mutas around. The Lings and Banes retreat back to the creep. Plus three, plus three, still on the way. Cure, streaming. You know, he's not parading across the map. He's actually sending out reinforcement groups. The parade push style is easily intercepted by Zerglings, so a pretty safe move, I say, as he's parading. More command centers on the way. It feels like Cure's getting a bit more confident as time goes on, which could be a bad sign for Rainer, who doesn't yet have Hive Tech. And 3-3 three, three is about to finish for Cure. He's, he's essentially hitting his pre-ghost power spike here. Oh, wow. Raynor delays the command center uh, right before they cut the ribbon on it. Another SCV comes up and finishes it off. One of them not going to finish. And all cancels it at the last second. Plus three infantry weapons is done. Three marauders and the little gap in the minerals there. But a massive Zergling counterattack. Stretching across the screen. Gonna try to edgy bay block a quick wall. All right, this is an age of empires. Uh, the attempt at a quick wall denied, but 20 SCVs will go down. The rest of the army actually streaming back. These brave marauders, the Muta's doing terrible, terrible damage to the SCVs as well. Uh, uh, I, I don't actually know how much the Muta's killed. I think the Zerglings did the majority there. But we'll give the Mutas credit because I want more people to make Mutas and not make them look sad just because they can't really do any damage because it's so easy to get splash damage to do anti-Muta. But so far, I will say, partially I think map dependent, but, but Raynor is keeping Cure busy and there's just so much more space to work with than Dragon Scales. Zerglings and Banelings, things crashing through. Widowmine connects. Zerglings continue to dot the production tab here. Couple Thors. Lurkers, by the way. Where's the scans? He's not looking. There's mutas on the other side of the map. Meanwhile, a drop to the top. Things escalating. All right, Rainer. Holding it down with the Lurkers. He's down to 140 supply. He actually lost 20 drones. Adrenal glands just now completing, but there's barely any Zerglings on the map. The Zerglings not cutting it. The Lurker count is scattered. Doesn't matter how many he has if he can't bring him to bear. He only has five at the moment. Adaptive talents on the way. Cure has defended all the attacks and uh, for the most part, has, has minimized damage back at home. Sure, he's lost 50 SCVs. But he still has that many on the field. Ghosts in production now. Not vetoing them entirely, but only one ghost so far. The Lurkers are the major threat. The Lurkers not nearly um, as likely to get into your mineral lines. But eight more Mutas for Raynor. A bold call. Ah. The mutas against ghosts and Thors and Widowmonds. He he's relying on them. He's trying to make them work. And <laughs> Cure is knocking on the door here. As the creep has receded most of the way across the map. The Lurkers are the only thing between Raynor and Destruction. As the Terran army gets another hatchery. Raynor's army supply is actually still quite large. He's got 18 Mutas and 13 Lurkers. Which is quite an army to put your faith in. No Vipers? No, I, I guess uh, when I called him not a late game player, he's decided to extend the mid game yet again. Oh my god, Cure... Lifts up everything and, you know, and then he realizes the moment the first Queen Needle hits, he's not beyond and uh, calms down <laughs> and drops him right back out. He's not going to drop into a whole bunch of Zerg just for the sake of it. There's still some Widowmines 
finding the mutas. He's getting play. He's he's all over. He's he's committed. He says, "I'm going mutas." I mean, if you get enough, if you reach that critical mass, and you micro perfectly, oh my god! Leave it to Cure to do some of the most disgusting widow mine play. He has a widow mine underneath there. Which, don't ask how the lurkers are hitting it, alright? A lot of advanced science is going on. Don't ask how the lurkers also fire over empty space. Uh, well, the ghosts are- whatever the lurkers are using, the, go the ghosts are using a very advanced version of it. As they snipe up through the mineral line into the lurkers. <sighs> well, a rainer's flock of mutas. He's at 199 supply. Nothing in the bank. But he is maxed out, so... There's not much else left to do. But send him across the map. Is building armor done? Neo Steel armor. Akira realizing that as the mutas swing in with plus two attack. Yeah, those turrets are going down really quick. And the mutas... The repeated attacks. Cure has not yet found a critical blow. He's done a whole lot of damage. He's killed a bunch of hatchery. He's killed three hatcheries. 64 drones. 66 SCVs, though. And now the mutas, they demand respect. The ghosts can't snipe unless they go uninterrupted. And he didn't have the units there. The mutas are fast enough to outrun the snipes. And, and Raynor is starting to crack open the defenses. And he's doing it his way. Cure is not keeping up with the mutas. You know, I've gone... I bet the income tab looks like my faith in mutas. Yeah. Except flip it around. It appears, though, when Raynor makes the mutas... I mean, what are, what are they good at? Map control. If you're able to keep a critical mass, you have to keep unit... Turrets don't cut it. All right, you can't build... Sorry, Bronze League. You can't build enough turrets, even with building armor, to deal with this many mutas. There's a physical amount of space the mutas can ignore, and they can just take them all down. So, so enough units have to stay at home that Raynor has been managed to stay alive and take back the initiative. And now there are mutas in the main. Lurkers at the third. Zerglings to the north. And there's nothing to stop pretty much any wave of this. Cure is beset on all sides and within his main. Beset is a very fancy word. I like saying, I like being able to use that in a sentence and then ruin it by mentioning it, but beset upon all sides. That's very serious sounding. I think that was good. All right, write that down somewhere, Jimmy. Just, all right, give me a, give me a word cloud of Sir David Attenborough in Planet Earth. Oh, the mutas, the natural predator of the mutas, the ghosts in turn, can be overwhelmed by the sheer number of its prey. The ghost, a cowardly creature, fights from the shadows within its cloaking device and fears direct confrontation, whereas the mutilisk seeks it out, despite danger to life and limb. And now we see the mutilisk flapping its wings in space, thus creating one of the most Pedantic conversations in all of Stargirl 2 history. Beautiful. Well, high impact mode Thors? There's a Thor mode directly, specifically designed to deal with mutas. But... Kira is using high impact mode. I, I, I don't actually... I mean, it's more reliable. No, he- Oh, was it accident? The People's Terran switched the mode? He didn't realize! Oh no! He switches it back mid-fight, but it's not enough to kill the critical mass of Mutas. As the lockers, Rainer streaming through the ghosts on the back line, finding the snipes, he doesn't have enough damage to interrupt them. Rainer, be careful! Well. And Cure's Counter-Strike. To the north. Find some more drones at a key timing. Oh no, not again. In this last fight, Cure has destroyed 3,500 gas. And 6,700 minerals to 3,713. Uh-oh. Rainer 
falling back. He builds more mutas. How many have been built this game? How many must die? And Raynard looks at his bank and says, well, about five more right now. 17 mutas. Ah. Oh my, it's happening. Well, he's gonna catch this army, but it, it already did the damage. This is a pretty devastating fight here, too. Was there a widow mine in there? Or did everything just die horribly? Plus three mutalisks so with plus one carapace. Rainer just keeps going mutus, and Cure hasn't found the answer yet. The ghosts look good, but Rainer still has so much of the map. This is not. This is, I think, a good demonstration of maps in in StarCraft Two as well. As Cure can't just pin down one base very easily. He can't move out and and threaten Rainer without exposing a huge amount of his economy. And Rainer is very much he's using the fastest units in the game. Mutilus and Zerglings to do it. These widow mines. Three hatcheries in production. How many command centers left? Five orbitals and one planetary. So not as much to fall back on. One infester. Ah, yes. It's Sylvester the Fester. Because puns are fun. Or not even puns. Alliteration. I don't know if it's an accident, but sometimes one infester is all you need. One good fungal. They interrupt the ghosts, and this army could easily close the distance. My god, they killed that tank so fast. <laughs> the tanks have plus two armor? But how many mutas? He's got 20 mutas. They weren't even all there. He had like 15 mut. The plus three mutas do a lot of damage. And it increases the damage from their, their bounces as well. The glaive bouncing through. Another set of lings. And Mutus, as Rainer will continue to hit the other side of the map. Cure raises the depots in a desperate attempt to stop the flood. And will for now. But the Mutus, no amount of depots. Can we stack them really high or something? Shut up, Billy. Shut up. No amount of depots is going to stop the Mutus. The TPM raises, the turrets per minute. The tanks taken out. A few more mutas. He's lost 50. That won't be the end number. <sighs> He's going back up to 20 mutas. Cure is buckling down once again. He's retreated within his shell. And we'll see if this time, like, oh, I gotta be careful. I gotta be careful. I was so convinced Rainer was gonna win Dragon Skin. <laughs> Oh my. And then, and then one horrible fight. Turn it all around. Cure sets himself up for success and sometimes allows you to bring it to him. And this is another time where Rainer's gonna have to be very careful. Like, he's ahead. He's winning. He's ahead on supply. He's mined more minerals. He's mined a lot more gas as well. 5,000 more. But he's lost 4,000 more as well. Gresman has a lot more space to work with, and I think at least two more bases. But. The Royal Butt. That sounded in many ways inappropriate, but. I'm sorry, Queens, especially after the uh, tragic accident with the Overlord earlier. Oh my god, the flock, the murder of Mutas into the main, but the scattered turrets here. As I, I think Raynard is trying to be careful. There could be Widow Mines. It's almost impossible to tell with the, the, the barracks of the main. I think he needs a couple overseers with him before he feels comfortable diving on the production. And production is not that expensive in the granite. Like 150 minerals for a barracks is easily replaced. 100, 100 for a muta, on the other hand. In fact, Kira is building more barracks now. He's flexible with his economy and his unit composition. 
um, but rigid in his production and his commitment to macro. And uh, dangerously, Cure has remaxed out. It's been a great effort, but he's back at 200 supply. The Zerglings, deja vu. We've just been to this place before. Siege tanks at the net, and the Zerglings trying to break through. Petered off at the end there. Just like the Zerglings. He's gonna, if he gets a tank. The ghost count? He's got 16 of them. Where's Sylvester? Oh, and his friend. Greg. He's got two infestors. Greg, young, but aging by the day. Greater Spire. As Raynor has taken one of the contested bases to the south, while mining from the north. That is a big deal yet again. One base. The minerals, I believe 20k or so, but very important, the number is 4,500 gas. Each gas geyser has 2,250. Uh, so each base, especially on a standard map like this, it's 4,500 gas per base. Right now, Rainer has lost about 5,000 more gas of units. Whoa. Well, a few ghosts going down could definitely change that a bit. Oh, he got one. It just died so dramatically, I thought it was a bunch of them. A siege tank push. Across... He, has, he essentially has an entire line across the map of siege tanks. Which Raynor is exploiting wherever it's thinnest. Though some of the snipes will land. So with one extra base, so very key. It's not just that you get 4,500 more mineral, or gas, potentially. It's you deny them that 4,500. So the number is 9,000. If the gap is over 9,000, then you can afford to lose one base, at least, of Vespian gas. I'd say about 15, 20k minerals is the number there. It's a lot more dependent on unit composition and all that. But Vespian gas is a limit. Um, and usually the main one. There was a questionable pickup there. Like here. It's like, hop in! Do you have boost off cooldown? Well. The Mutas have kept it together. Raynor has been able to stave off the death ball of Cure throughout the entire game. And, but he hasn't been able to break it. It looked for a few moments like he might break through. But as the ghost count grew, then his chances became few. And now he feels obligated to add brood lords too. It seems like hive tech. It's pretty great. Who knew? Definitely not a player named Sue. Okay, that was a low effort pun, and you know it too. I know, no, I know. It's definitely true. Oh, no. The snipes begin. Rainer. Cure realizing. Oh, wait a second. Rainer's managed to mine about a thousand gas from this base. The gap is about 4,500. The Brood Lords! Though, there is no easy answer. Rainer's Brood Lords. Big Ghost looking for an opportunity to snipe them out. And we'll find some of them, but the Mutas can cover. The Skyzerg army. Brenda, no! The Queen also there for moral support. Oof. The tanks starting to crumble. Lurkers, Hydraling Bane. Here. Most of his army was focused to the south here. He doesn't have that much to directly respond to this. He may lose that planetary, and here comes the army. The investors underneath, looking for the ghosts. The ghosts are on the run. He's abandoning the planetary. 
How much gas? About a thousand. The drones, though. Are we base trading? I mean, yes, but also... Eh. This centerline base. Winners bind over half the gas. There is no speeding it up unless it's a rich base, in which case it just binds twice as fast. Well, here we are. Still near maxed out. Neither player trading much of their army away there. But. Let's look at the resources mined. Seventy-eight thousand thirty k, twelve k difference for Rainer. I mean, slow and steady may very well win the race for Kira. At some point, the idea, like, at some point, denying these bases becomes important, but not everything. As you need to deal with, like, Kira's going to have this army, Rain. How are you going to deal with it? Obviously, he tried to end it earlier. He knows that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. But. It's here now. He needs the spell. I think we've, we he has to, you have to think. W, W, double, D. What would Dark do? I guess you could also think of Sarah if you really wanted, but... Dark wood... Brood Lords on the table, yes. Infestors, very much yes. Neural Parasite, Rainer. As, I mean, Cure and Dark have gone the distance a whole bunch of times. The Mutas? Are the Mutas gone? The total count, 83. I don't think we'll see them again. They've gone extinct. They won't be coming back. Not against this army. 60! And then he's just like, you know what? How about 61 Bailings? How about that? Kira catches the edge. Oh my god, it looks like a campaign mission. You only see the edge of the bay. You don't know how many are back there. The answer is possibly too many. Well. There's so many Banelings. 66 Banelings. An auspicious number. Well, the oh, Blinding Cloud comes off before the EMPs. The Banelings are rolling in, absorbing a lot of the damage. The ghost at the back, where the Infestors catches some with a fungal. Banelings roll past, melting through much of the army. Is there going to be enough to deal with the Broodlords afterwards? At the end of the day, that's the most important question. Yeah, Raynor Remax is out immediately, but on a hundred Zerglings. Well, the Thors, he's going to try to pick him up. A, uh, a difficult effort, it seems. But Kira regrouping. Trying to pull it back together. So far, only marginally successful. He is mining from the south. Important to keep noting. 32 more Banelings. Says Raynor looking to batter him down yet again. He doesn't want him to have this base. As the uh, Vespine gas loss gap closed it all. The, I mean, the Brood Wards are not being dealt with. Rainer is not being uh, chipped away nearly as much as Pure needs as another round of Banelings. Blinding Cloud comes in. The Thors have to evacuate. Pure is routed from the front. And Rainer, with a decisive victory, he may have broken the death ball. The Broodlord count is too damn high. Kira didn't even have plus three mech weapons. He's been relying. He has not been nearly as rich in this game as on Dragon Scales, at least comparably. And Rainer evolved a little further. The Brood Lord's necessary here. A necessary evil indeed, it seems like uh, uh, Rainer accepts. And this. No, be careful. Mm, I'm pretty confident. The Brood Lords. Lurkers are a bit different, but Brood Lords are something you need a direct response to. Lurkers are terrestrially bound, whereas the Brood Lords will melt their way through. Not really melt. That definitely isn't the right word. They will chew. They definitely chew. They take a big bite and then a lot of little nibbles. But it's a, a chewing process indeed. Even there are still some lurkers underneath there as well. Rainer. 
chewing things up. Oh, did he just run out of detection? Oh, <laughs> Rainer realized it. I don't know if Kira was confident enough to move forward. Yeah, yeah, he joins up with another overseer. Oh, and he catches the army. Wasn't expecting it back in time. A lot of damage being done to the broods, but there's just not that many Thors. The Thors are no longer here. The Lings and Banes will overrun, and it is an incredibly exhaustive match. Rainer on the ropes on match point. That's never affected him, though. Rainer down 2 0. Fights for 40 minutes to put a point on the board. Oh my. He did it. Wow. <sighs> oh, okay, well, that means we have at least one more game. <laughs> oh, well, I expected these two to have a dramatic series. I mean, well, and here we are. All right, you know what? Why can't I just accept I was right? Feels like there has to be a, but no. Rainer's adapted. He wants to win this one. It's a pretty decent amount on the line. Uh, he's not letting Cure just have it for free. I can't believe the Mutas were the ticket. I think they were partially like a comfort unit for Rainer. He's such a fast player. The Mutas fit him so well. Uh, but eventually, he, he switched out of them into the brew. Anyways, Jimmy, we're done with the filler. Game four. Here we go. And we're not loading into two barracks or three barracks across the map. And that is the real surprise. I, I think overall. <sighs> Let me take a break. Can we take a breather? Get some water. I need to... <laughs> These series, I do want to cast long series, epic series. I will say on the YouTubes, thank you for watching, by the way, like, subscribe, all that. They usually, because even if like, say the series is 90 minutes and people watch over half an hour. Okay. That's a huge amount. Nobody. There's a reason. All those, all those YouTubers post 15 minute videos because the attention span of people on YouTube is uh, usually not as advanced as StarCraft viewers. Thing is, the average amount people watch is, uh, even, even if a series is 40 minutes, 30 minutes is an outlier. Some people, for some reason, all right, usually by mistake, I'm sure, just realize they're not into the video, click off immediately. So, the the 90 minute, two hour series, usually YouTube's like, well, people didn't watch your videos long. I'm like, but, they watch for 30, 30 some minutes. Or in this case, an hour and, oh my god, 20. Well, or they skipped here and should feel bad because you missed out. It was worth it. Or was it? I don't know. Check. Don't, don't check the comments before watching the series. What am I saying? So, one, there's that. And two, honestly, not too many best of fives go this long. In an average tournament, a best of five is slated for an hour. That's the closest you can get to predicting how long a StarCraft 2 series will be. Um, any, uh, usually it's less. A lot of the time, very rarely it's more. But this is the grand finals, so I don't think the organizers are too upset. And of course you factor in some time in between the games. Because a lot of the time you, you have more games like this one. With roaches on the way across the map. This is a Roach all in. This is Ravagers at three and a half minutes. This is me not needing to fill time for 10 minutes because they're going for the most ultra macro game. But instead, Raynor tried to kill Cure right here, right now. 
And if he fails, well, he's only got 19 drones. This is hyper committed. He needs to do damage. And ideally, he wins. The, well, it's 3 CC. This is. Is he finally going to punish Cure for making three command centers with almost nothing? Well, the corrosive bile just lands Cure to panic. He doesn't have the Banshee, it's too early. And a 3cc delays the starport anyways. And the roaches and ravagers, oh my god, Cure. Well, he just killed him. He just walked up and killed him. No, 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 that's too much. I thought, like, like if he had 10, 15 SCVs left over, that's workable. 3cc. Well, you know... He's got a wall, is what he's got. You know, every SCV, that's one-tenth of his account. I did say 10, 15. And you know why, by the way? There you go. That's why. As... Oh, I'm, I'm really making some premature calls in this series. I, I I slightly apologize. Though, it really... You're losing to corrosive... Well, he lost Marines to corrosive bio yet. And I think this is kind of a demonstration of why you don't see too many all-ins, even against three command center. Because you do have to do game-ending damage. Because Kira right now... Well, Raynor got up to 30 drones behind this. Of course, he had some map control. But with three orbitals of mules, Cure is not out of this yet. Raynor's gonna follow up with another attack. Gambling, yet again, that he can hit him before there's really any additional production. And he may very well be right. He may be able to lay it down. A medevac on the way. Could be helpful, but Raynor coming in again. Here is kind of gearing up to try to macro this out. Whereas Raynor has roaches and ravagers. The cyclones are an interesting uh, opportunity. He's got a banshee on the way. If that banshee was producing a lot earlier, this would look very different. But he went for the medevac for the cyclones. And he may regret... Oh no! Cure! 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 Oh no. Well, it's a disaster. This is... He has... The most significant portion of his army. He has the medevac and two cyclo... Yeah, that's... Well, they're coming back to finish what they started. If that medevac and those two cyclones were at home behind the wall... Wait, where are the cyclones? Oh no, they drove home. He picked a select all army. Okay, okay, okay. There's a Banshee now. He's back down to 10 SCVs. The Viking. I think Cure may live. But at what cost? This time, it's, it, it's too much. We gotta keep going. Alright, he's still sending Zerglings. Cure. I will say this for Cure. Doesn't give up easy. Honestly, after game one, don't. Okay? After, after Dragon Scales, just don't. No matter how bad it looks, no matter how much the casters are already playing you out, I will... Uh, Rainer is at 35 drives today. It's, it's a... He has a Banshee. And he has three orbital commands. And really... That is a lot. Is it enough? Probably not. But... He spots the Spire. The Banshee obviously spots it. But he's not... I don't know if trying to kill the Spire is that meaningful. If he gets it, a slight delay is better than nothing. Overseer on the way, but the Banshee out DPS is the more freight of the Spire. The Zerglings find another twelfth of the economy. Oh, Hellions. Banshee almost dies while the Hellions are being micro. Overlords. Oh, it has been a series of incredibly unfortunate events for Cure. Losing a Banshee, Cure decides 
Well, I guess it's just time. He doesn't have that much production. Rainer's at 50 drones. Wait, are we going forward or back? Trying to get Rainer to build some units, but he may regret that in the end. Oh. This base doesn't have any detect- Are we doing- Oh my god, are we doing it again? Now this might be the timing. The German taxi build to ferry the queens across the map to the front line. As the banshee- Unless he just kills another banshee, in which case, whatever then. Is he gonna chase down the banshee with the queen drops? Hmm. No, oh my god, not again. Deja vu. It's happening again! If he lost the queen drop there, then the banshee has free reign. Of course, there's a lot of target. What's with the Vikings? Why do you have three Vikings? You can't just build Vikings. What is he doing? Is he trying to prevent exactly the drop? But I don't think the main problem is the queens and the dropper lord. As much as I'd like to consider them an existential threat. He's, well, if he zones out the Queens, the Banshee could kill everything else. Yeah, if he had, like, half an hour. There's no way he's getting through that much biomass with a Banshee. I... Well, here we go. Another round. Here, like, he has to make sure he's dead. All right. Here has held, eventually, three times. Or two times. This would be three. Um. The queen. He got the overlord. Brenda! How did it come to this? Well, whatever. We got the banshee. And with that. And the queen's arriving at the natural. Raynor will take two back. Headed towards the reverse sweep. Which is something he's known for. But. Ah! I'm exhausted. I'm sh well, I'm not sure the players are. In fact, well, Cure is kind of a slow and steady. Kind of a tortoise in the hare situation with Cure. Whereas... Rainer just speeding through. We're going to match point. The ace match. Ah, oh, in this Kung Fu Cup. Again, shout out to World Team League. Make sure to check them out. Jimmy, please um, if, make sure to put the description or at least I don't know if they have a link or something like that. I don't. Game five. The final match, assuming it's not a draw. Which is a non-zero possibility. In fact, here been part of several very near draws. In fact, I think he's been part of several games that could have been draws if Kier fought for it. But of course, everyone wants to win. Like, for Terran, you have a lot more opportunities to not lose. Simply with floating buildings to a corner and, and potentially denying with anti-air. But... All right. Reaper comes in again. Rainer handles it. Reaper getting a little deep, but at least it has those little indicators there. Nowhere to go. How convenient. Will he go 3cc again? Because I do think that was a pretty good example of why 3cc. He's so good with the, the max distance bounce grenades. Looks like he will. This time he's even floating the barracks over. Yeah, the Overlord. Well, not exactly the most exciting chase, but he will get him. Eventually. Down it goes. Right now with only one Ovi on the way. He needs to up those numbers. There we go. Quite annoying. Still annoying. So, last game, I think a pretty decent 
example of why uh, trying to punish 3cc is relatively rare as the margin between doing enough damage and not enough like the bounce back rate of Terran with three mules when the economy is when the when the worker count is very low for both sides like under 30 workers the mules uh, which are mine for about five SCVs worth make up for a lot so you, you're spending a lot of potential to get damage done. And if it doesn't pay off, you've got a hill to climb against a player with a relatively better economy. So Raynor was able to do the damage because that was almost best case scenario multiple times. Where he didn't go Banshee. He didn't scout it in any way. He even got hit by some corrosive biles. Like... So it was about as good as it gets in terms of Ravager Ling. And it still was dicey. Which is why I'm not surprised to see um, a more standard macro 3 hatch here for Zerg. Much better at absorbing damage and overwhelming with units later on. Though Cure is quite tough to crack. Banshees with cloak and armory. Uh, armory. How many Hellions? Five uh, Hellbats. All right. Interesting. A Hellbat timing with Banshees. Which, uh... No medivacs. Not really many Marines. It could work, but... He already spotted the Banshees, so there's already Overseers out. Quite a quick lair out of Raynor. I think he wanted a quick Baneling speed, but then he saw the Banshees. Oh, but the Queens are caught! They will get one Banshee. But three of them are roasted here. Royal Blood cauterized to start things off as Cure. The Methodical Hell- Oh, the Banelings! Well, that wasn't nearly as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, the Hellbats just kind of... Slow Banes are exactly as they sound. There's a reason they're called Slow Banes and not just Banes and Speed Banes. It's pointed out, Slow Banes. There's a reason that almost every Zerg unit has a speed upgrade. Uh, and Creep itself is a speed upgrade. Because you got to close the distance. Now, yes, it's cleaned up. But this was by no means supposed to be a game-ending attack. By Cure. Honestly, it, it didn't go great. It was not amazing. In fact, it was a bit questionable, actually. I'm not sure why he did such a late Hellbat attack, but he has an armory now. He's already getting Widow Mines behind it. Where's the 1-1 one, one Cure? Where is it? Oh no, Cure. I was saying they're getting tired. Raynor at full speed. Raynor's warmed up. I think Cure. No, he needs the 1-1. One, one. That's, not, that's not a choice. That's a mistake. And after an hour and a half, Cure, the far elder, I think Cure's uh, 27, 28, Rainer, a spry, uh, spry, oh my god, I'm so old. That is, well, that was intended to sound old. That spry young man with his uh, APMs and his mutalisk micro. Back in my day, well, actually, back in my day, we microed mutas. But then, for many days after that, we stopped making mutas. And we still don't. Usually. But occasionally, we try it. And it usually doesn't go great. But you did a pretty good job of it, young man. Anyways, what was I saying? Where's the 1-1? One, one? Oh, no. That is so late. Almost the entire upgrade late. He has an armory. I guarantee you he thought he already had it. And he looked to start 2-2. Two, two. Honestly, that was probably the timing he was looking for. Rainer is not. Rainer might not even realize. Hmm. Eh, Rainer realizes that he's going to have such an upgrade advantage because he's going to finish one one. He'll look. I'm sure he'll click and see that the Marines don't have it. 
But the people of Terran, making a very understandable yet critical mistake here. The only saving grace may be that Raynor doesn't realize um, and take advantage of it too quickly. But in these fights, it's such a huge difference. Hydras. The hy there's so many Hydras. He has so many Hydras. What in the... What? He's, uh, he's just trying all the lists out today. Uh, we, we still need Ultras. But Rainer doesn't want to throw that hard. I mean, he's going up to 40 Hydralisks. Wow. The Marine count is high enough. Like, Cure, he has enough units. It's so many high. He's just going mass high. Is this, is this? What is this? What are you doing? I mean, if they have the upgrades, I gotta go back to that. Group spines is done. He has Hydra range now, so that gives him a little bit more to work with against the Marines. The creep spread. All right, cure mass Marine to try to deal with it. Is there a Bane nest? He didn't get Bane speed. What are we doing here in game five? Yeah, and then, yeah, well, he thought of it too. Radar is like, oh, wait a second, that's a lot of Marines. And pound for pound, even though the Marines have a lot less pounds. Overall, there's more of them. And the DPS is something that Cure, well, oh my god, he just takes down the command center. The DPS of the Hydras, if they're able to bring it to bear, which is usually the struggle. Oh my god, he has so many high There's like 40. He's, he's lowering the number a little bit to add in some lings and banes. I wonder if he even realized how many hydras he built. He just kept building them. And then suddenly you're sitting here with like 45 hydra lists. I don't know. Well, hydra ling bane. Against mass siege tank marine. The 2-2 hasn't kicked in yet. Cure wasn't punished too hard for the lack of the plus one, plus one, though he may have lost his command center because of it. As he wasn't able to contest the army on the field. Baneling speed about to complete. A whole bunch more banes morphing in. The Hydraling Bane setting up for the surround, but Cure is maxed out. Will Rainer try to wait until plus two, plus two? I think so. He's got 15 seconds on the clock. We'll see how quick he pulls the trigger after that. Three, two, one. It's time. Does he go up the ramp? The Banelings split and trickling in in order to maximize the amount of damage they can absorb. It's still not enough to break a well-placed siege line. And Cure, still kicking. He's got plus two, plus two, finishing up. Raynor didn't actually start his hive tech upgrades. More Hydralings and Bane. Coming down the ramp is not so great. The drop in the, in the center, though, kills a hatchery. And Raynor knocked back to five hatches. Cure has a planetary at his fourth. And despite a, a rocky start, is starting to really secure himself in this game. As once again, Raynor is very focused on these mid-game units. Wow, the medevacs are out of energy from just healing mass marine. Just dims across the board. Any damage from the hydras. Yeah, 3-3 three, three starts immediately. Cure will be the first to 3-3, three, three, despite his significant delay. The upgrades take the same amount of time for Terran and Zerg. For reference, infantry and uh, Zerg upgrades. So, overall, pretty meaningful. Hydras, Lings, and Banes again. The siege tank target fire is... Okay, mediocre in that fight, as the Banelings are able to close the distance enough. More Hydralings and Banes. Well, just Hydras here, and just Hydras on their own. Relatively fragile. Not too hard for this army to take down, and Rainer's gonna have to regroup. But two Vipers on the way, Cure. Rallying across the map now. The siege tank count is growing, as are its upgrades. Plus one mech weapons is done. Rainer! 
Oh, he may have bitten off a little more than he could chew, and now Cure is taking advantage of that. The Zerglings looking to intercept reinforcements. Not one but two hatcheries vulnerable to the position that Cure has taken. And Rainer dips in supply. Cure takes back the lead. Another epic game between these two. They're both making mistakes. Like, this is, this is like watching the last round of a boxing match. All right. Now, you don't know it's going to be the last round, I think, in a box. I don't know how boxing works. Anyways, the Italian Stallion on the ropes right now. Cure landing punches left and right as it looked like he was winded earlier. But he just has that stamina. And Rainer is going to have to hold on. Lurkers on the way out. Viper somewhere on the field, I assume. We saw it in production. Yes, the Vipers have energy. Rainer. Widow Mines dodged. Here with a nice deep... Wait, he just ran right through there. No, I don't know if it's an actual wall, but close enough. The siege tank count is so damn high. Oh, no. Cure making a completely uncharacteristic mistake. Oh, no! Raider sees it! It's a disaster! Everything unseaged! Everything clumped up! The chasm of doom here! And Cure will try to split and stim, but Raider wins the first half of the fight. And can he carry it through to the rest? If there were a few more tanks... A handful more Marines. Rainer suffering incredibly heavy losses. But Cure was 10 seconds off 3-3. His entire army caught. And still manages to turn the fight into something of a Pyrrhic victory, I'd say. Oh, he, he, it, it, it was even. Look at it, that. That was best case scenario for Raider with the army he had in that position. Though, I think he may have been slightly baited by exactly that. As still, coming through a choke point, the blinding clouds didn't hit everything. And those marines had huge DPS. But he was able to hit before plus, uh, plus three finished. So, it wasn't going to get too much better. If Kier was sieged up with any of his tanks, it could have looked disastrous for Raynor. But of course, I don't think he would have attacked them. Another drop to the top left, but Kier has to abandon his third. The Vipers yanking the tanks. Just one tank. Okay, let's not exaggerate. Mainlings roll in as Cure. Another drop. Rainer missed it. I missed it. But Cure on point. Getting those drops out there. And just like that, Rainer back down to four bases. Here, only holding on to three himself, but able to pick up the drops and head towards the main. How many command centers? One, two, three, four, five. He runs them around. So... Oh, <laughs> one medevac. A brutal series and an appropriately... <laughs> uh, appropriate slugfest. In game five. I have no idea at this point. Raynor has not started plus three. He's been working without main. You know, while Cure forgot his upgrades, Raynor actually went for ranged attack. He has not had the Ling or the Bane Ling upgrades, which I think is really starting to show against the Marines. Well, not, not against the Marines. The Bane Lings are connecting. But now Cure. Spooky. A dozen ghosts. A Widow Mine finds five drones to the top left. Cure going for gold. I... Hmm... Sensor Towers, Nidus, Liberators, Cure establishing defensive entrenched positions out on the map trying to protect the gold. Forward defense. He has. Are there any infestors? No. Zero. Raynor still has the army supply lead, but he has some. Oh, well, he's, he's relying on these overwhelming units.
Ghost Cloak is about to finish. Which can result in some lopsided fights if Render's not prepared. Hmm. Plus three mech weapons, Burrow. A knight is headed towards the main. Still an opportunity for very, very dramatic action. Liberator's coming back. They can't stop the Nidus, but they can help stop the Lurkers. Meanwhile, Rainer takes advantage of this to head towards the center blinding cloud. Negates most of the siege tanks. The rest are ripped to shreds. The, the, and they're both going for the main. A full-on base trade for the final conclusion. Assuming. Oh, wait. Rainer. I was assuming too much. Rainer was shoved back. The Liberators keeping him inside the Nidus Worm. Hydras and Lurkers made some progress to the center. The Marines, both sides, clean up the main. And uh, deal with any other attacks. More Marines. Go snipe off the Vipers. Oh, no. And the drop is still rotating around. Ugh. Kira doing so much with so... Well, not so little. But he is making it work. He has this methodical style that Rainer is able to catch him out. But eventually he catches up. I feel like Rainer sometimes laughs himself. He's trying to run so many circles around Cure. He comes back up against the defenses. But this time around, the lurkers on both sides will be enough to deal with the gold. And there is a Nidus at the natural. Rainer keeps trying things to see what'll work. His own gold base is going to be denied for now. I think he just started mining from there. A drop heading back towards the main. Another knight is taken out by the Marauders, but relentless. Another one from Rainer. Trying to outlast. Another command center goes down. Rainer still maxed out. Liberator will be dealt with with a spore crawler, assuming Cure doesn't notice in time. I don't think he will. Another knight is this one taken out, but after it finishes, it's getting closer. As a uh, cure is starting to run low on mining right now. Rainer doesn't have that much income himself. He actually added a few more drones. He lost nine of them between the Liberators, the Widow Mines, the Drops themselves. But the gold base, the gold hatchery is still intact. The Spore Crawler chasing it to the back of the mineral line. I'm coming for you. And indeed he is. He comes back in time. And uh, Rainer is going to be able to mine yet again. 185 to 199 supply. Here, struggling to put much on the table. Rainer, without much gas, but pretty much unlimited Zerglings. How do they keep doing this? I'm sorry, that's how I feel right now. I can't imagine the players. But Rainer at 200 supply, he keeps the, the, he just, he keeps his tempo advantage, which feels weird to say, but is it an advantage? I keep coming back to that. Like he, he keeps throwing units at bases, denying them, but Cure has lost almost 10,000 less minerals and 2,000 less gas. Truly a tortoise in the hare sort of series here. It's been so close for so long. Who ends up winning at the end? I know how the lore goes, but this one might be a little different. As here comes Raider yet again, looking for an opportunity in the center of the map. The Viper is not even involved in the fight. He yanks out one of the Liberators. The ghosts are cloaked. There is detection from a single overseer. The Banelings rolling in, cure splits. It's okay. A lot of the ghosts on the line here. The Lurkers not all killed. Another sniped out. A brutal fight for both sides. The ghosts, uh, the hatchery, anyone. The hatchery goes for the drones, which ghosts are pretty great against anyways. I, uh, the Rainer lost another 1,700 minerals. Uh, the abducts onto the Metavax. The ghosts are getting caught, though. Who's here to protect them? Without the Metavax, they can't be saved. No point in cloaking. The Zerglings close in and rip the ghost to shreds. Cure. Now, how much did he need those ghosts? How many lurkers on the field? There's only two. There's still a lot of siege tanks. There's still a couple ghosts back here, by the way. 
There's no detection. The lurkers find a decent amount of damage. The ghosts just taking pot shots. Not bad against hydras, lings, or banes in particular. They do bonus damage against light. And they don't take extra against banes because they're not light units themselves. They're medium if that was a description, but nobody gets bonus damage against that. Burrows the lings, but Cure again has an army knocking on the door. A great siege tank spread. He forgot concussive shells. This is the game of for okay, what did what did Rainer forget? Oh, he's at plus one melee. What? Now, I'd say that's a pretty big one. And if you're wondering why these fights aren't more lopsided in his favor, it's because his Zerglings are having trouble actually getting damage done. And he only has plus two ranged attack. Rainer has not filled out his upgrades. And I think that has made the difference thus far. That's kept Cure going. He's been just efficient enough to keep these pushes together. Rainer still maxed. Another wave. Here we go again. Lightning Cloud on the tanks. Most of them removed from the fight. The Zergling's closing in. Cure has taken out multiple hatcheries. He's trying to mine from the right. He's down to 100. More abducts at a questionable distance. But Rainer's supply is overwhelming. And he just batters Cure down. Rocky wins. The Italian Stallion outlasts Cure. And I think that's really the only way to describe this series. I don't know how many thousand Zerglings were lost. How many hundreds of Marines. But at the end of the day, the, the Zerg end up winning. Rainer's overwhelming swarm is just enough to break through. Oh, I am so exhausted. That was a series in two halves, which would just be two series. Can't. I truly hope you enjoy. Enjoyed. I hope I made a significant portion of your day a little bit better. Thank you for spending it with me. Make sure to uh, subscribe before you let the local video auto autoplay. Uh, tell me how much do you like this here? Do you, how do you watch? I know a lot of people watch them over maybe uh, multiple days, stuff like that. Do you want more long series? Break them up maybe into some highlights. I don't know. But uh, thank you to WTL, World Team League, the Kung Fu Cup. Thank you for watching 1,000, what, 81? 81 likes. Cast another series. Might be a day. We might give it a day after this one. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.